In recent years, there has been a smattering of indie racing games paying homage to various past eras of games in the genre. Most focus on either being like OutRun, like 80s Overdrive, which I covered recently, or they focus on being more akin to games like Daytona USA. Formula Retro Racing takes a stab near the latter portion there, being like Virtual Racing. It's one I didn't hear about until it was already out, so I requested a review code to give the game a fair shake and help make you aware of it. Does it nail the feeling of what it's going for, or just sort of spin its tires? Well, if you can forgive me for indulging on that pun, we'll sort out an answer in this video. Before going in, I feel it's important to stress that the game was made by a very small team, and while that won't change my criticisms, I feel it's important that I show I'm aware of that, because I also want to show as much understanding as a silly YouTube game talker can. I imagine not much is more annoying than someone uninformed to making silly claims. So to put it bluntly, Formula Retro Racing offers up 8 tracks with 3 difficulties per course, 2 game modes, and a variety of cars with different paint jobs that seem to handle exactly the same. If your decision rests on how much content a racing title can offer up for you, that will help you decide if there's enough here for you. I was able to earn all of the game's achievements over a few hours of play, if you were curious. However, with that time, I was only able to come in first place in a couple tracks on all of the difficulties. The real meat of the game may take you quite a bit longer to truly accomplish a gold trophy on every course. You see, Formula Retro Racing is a bit of a tough game. Its checkpointing gets pretty tight on higher difficulties, and it takes some time to learn the best way to handle the turns on each lap. And once you do, it feels very rewarding to get those first place wins. I was a bit surprised by how much fun I was having playing each course over and over to improve my abilities, which helped ease the pain of the lack of content overall. Sure, I wish the cars had different handling properties, and if they already do, then servicing the information would help a ton, and maybe a few more courses would be nice, but I've spent a lot of time trying to become good at what is here. It's a pretty good feeling arcade racing game in terms of car feel. The sense of speed is satisfactory, braking for turns is pleasing, and actually earning first place feels like a true victory as you delve into higher difficulties. I really wasn't expecting too much out of the vehicle handling, but it's actually very competently done and is probably my favorite thing about the game. It does come with some annoyances though that made me grit my teeth and bite my tongue while playing. It's hard to show through footage, but when a competitor's vehicle comically explodes from a crash, the physical collision data of their vehicle remains on the road in a solid object, as if the vehicle was still sitting there on the road. Graphically, it has exploded into smithereens, but as far as the reality of you crashing into it is concerned, it's remained there until the vehicle respawns and is visible again. That means that if a car wrecks and happens to wreck where you're about to drive through, you still collide with it even though it isn't seen. Speaking of collisions, you also can explode into smithereens, of course, but the parameters for what constitutes these explosions are unclear and seem inconsistent. See here, where a mere touch causes my poor retro racer to experience his final fleeting moments, contrast it here, where his soul lives to see another crash despite what would seemingly be a copious amount of endured damage. As a player, it's hard to complain about the latter, of course, but being able to withstand that much damage sometimes makes the times you can't all the more confusing and frustrating. The AI can also be aggressive on top of this, sometimes gladly going pretty out of their way to collide with you. If you smash into a wall, sometimes you lose all momentum and slide backwards a set distance before having to start over again with zero speed as well, which on the highest difficulty means you may as well just restart the race. Because man, the highest difficulties in this game cut you no slack at all. Other racers also seem to have a boost or something, as on straightaways they'll often barrel ahead of you a bit. The game does have a drag drafting system, but this happens even when they're in front of you, and it always feels slightly unfair when it happens. Lastly, be prepared to hate the final track. It makes sense for the last one to be the most difficult, of course, but it really is something. I've struggled to beat it on easy, I, I can't even imagine it on higher difficulties. But this likely means there's something about the game's handling I need to learn, so this is more of a talking point than a genuine complaint for the time being. As for matters of taste, I've found the music hit or miss. Some pieces do an adequate job of hitting the fun 90s racing game charm, while others come closer to becoming actually a bit grating in their instrumentation and sense of composition. Other areas fare better though, with a cheesy vocal announcer for time extensions and a visual style that straddles a pleasing line between budget and homage to inspiration. 
As for the divide between the two game modes, one is your classic racing style, doing your best to be first place out of 20 across as many laps as each course offers. The other is basically a test of endurance and stamina, tasking you with staying at least 10th place or higher for as many laps as you can last, with each additional lap cleared slightly increasing the speed of other racers. The latter is certainly less exciting and can be sort of mindless up until the point you have no choice but to be eliminated, but I at least appreciate the effort to put something else into the game to do. So, that's sort of everything to mention about Formula Retro Racing. There's no multiplayer modes, offline or online, so you're solely competing with the AI. And people's best times on the leaderboards, but it seems those are already seeing some cheating, which is how most leaderboards seem to go. Actually, does anybody really pay attention to leaderboards still? Anyway, Formula Retro Racing is a very simple racing game. One that feels pretty great to play, but if you're going to buy a copy for yourself, make sure you're patient enough to put up with the game's uneven and frustrating collision handling and AI. Unfortunately, for now my recommendation comes with qualifiers and warnings of frustration. There's some classic, charmingly simple fun to be had here, just be warned that if you want to fully complete all of the game's difficulties, you are likely to become very frustrated. With some patches to adjust the issues I've raised in this video, I believe that Formula Retro Racing could rise above and become an easy recommendation to those interested, as it has all the right ingredients. If you'd like to hear me talk about another arcade racer homage, you can find a link below to my video on 80s Overdrive. Thanks for tuning in, and do take care. Big shout out to my Patreon producers for keeping the show going, like Potate Jello, Goldstorm07, Buckles Chucklo, Jeet, Calico Plus, The Crazy Even, The Legend of Groose, Patrick Thompson, Svandelica, and Wolf Chaoson. Thanks again.